What is happening, y'all? Welcome, I'm back. So in this episode, we're knocking out the Golden Nation Demon King's Blade and Point of No Return. And we're actually going to do the Demon King's Blade first. This mission gives you access to the Tangan Guardian Spirit, which has a stance-based Emrita Absorption buff, which is quite powerful. So if you can get it now, it's going to be worth it. Now, the fight against Nobunaga isn't necessarily an easy one. Nobunaga is very, very strong. He does a lot of elemental damage. So, uh, you know, pull out the pull out the cheese. You can see, compared to uh, Obsidian Samurai, he doesn't stand still and let us go straight into a combo. But when he does summon his Guardian Spirits, you can usually get behind him and get some damage in. But this will probably be one of the more challenging fights that you'll have, so it might take a couple of attempts. I think fast builds work a little bit better against him than slower builds. Um, he just does so much damage, and when you consider the fact that a lot of it's elemental, all of the beefy armor that we have doesn't make a lick of difference. Snake and mid stance combo. You don't do any perilous attacks on me. There we go. Drastically different from the first attempt. So you'll get a little movie about Nobunaga and his ambitions, and you get Tengen Kujaku. Now, the one downside of Tengen Kujaku is it's going to be a phantom spirit. I consider phantom to be the most meh type of spirit. Uh, brute is, you know, it's brute. You just slap stuff to interrupt it. Uh, Feral is a instant on-demand parry that can also be used as a dash, really good at interruption. Phantom, you need to time it exactly as you're about to get hit. So I think it has the tightest window of all of them. But despite that, if you can get used to it, Tengen is 100% worth using. The reason being for the stance-based Emrita bonus. Now what this bonus does is as you attack stuff and you build up Emrita, if you're in a high stance, you get a hefty attack increase. If you're in mid stance, you get a defense buff, essentially steel buff. And if you're in low stance, it ramps up your key recovery speed. Now, just to show exactly how significant this is real fast, we're going to jump into the dojo because um, I do feel it's worth demonstrating this just so that, you know, you understand what you're missing out on by not taking this. So we are in high stance right now, and we're just going to do our, our basic combo on the Yoki here. 801 our regular hit a couple times that one was like a counter hit so our regular hits were 801 right and now we're gonna grab this over here see that buff that we have up that was a crit 1050 82. I'm trying to get like a clean hit that's not one to the head or anything. There we go. So 1050 is our, our new baseline. So as you can see, really, that that's significant. That is a big increase in our damage. Um, the mid stance, like I said, defensive buff. And then in low stance, there is a uh, key recovery buff. So it's useful no matter what stance you're in. But high stance in particular, you take that and couple it with rage on the axe and you are hitting incredibly hard. Um, aside from that, it also has some good perks. We don't have the stat allocation for them with this build. We probably won't ever have it. 
Uh, but if you are the type of person, given you're already watching this walkthrough to make sure you don't miss loot, but if you, you know, just want to go through the game and find everything, this will give you enemy, treasure, Amrita, and Kodama sensor. So basically all of those things will be on your map at any given time. Enemies will be red dots, treasures will be blue, Amrita will be yellow, and Kodamas will be green. All of them on your radar. Um, you know, we're, we're not even going to have that or the anima bonus, and I still think it's worth us using this guy just because of how strong that stance-based Amrita bonus is. Uh, very, very significant. Now, obviously, Brute is still a really solid go-to choice. If you don't care about that bonus, um, we're getting Anima bonus off Garb with Brute Spirits, which is obviously very synergistic with this type of build, so something to keep in mind. Uh, we're going to still be running Shinroku, which will give us Anima Charge on Strong Attack, in addition to that Life Drain on Strong Attack. So we're going to put some some cores on our friend here. We'll put on Yatsu no Kami, and then uh, let's see... How about uh, this Waira? Put him on. I can put on the Nurikabe. And a bonus on Scorched Enemy. Um, he's kind of a low level. Namahage is pretty good. Oh, choices, choices, choices. Um, Roka for the fire damage buff. I'm doing a lot of fire damage. Let me do Namahage, and then I'm going to combine Namahages to level them up, get them maxed out. That works for me. Uh, so with that done, let's jump into the Gold Nation. This one actually has some Kodamas. Now, there's a couple different approaches here. You can actually knock this mission out super fast. Um, we are going to be going all the way through it and covering everything, but I'll point out the fast approach, too, if you just want to get it done. So right at the start, we are going to go all the way to the left and open this door. Some loot. And then we're going to do this and kill corner, kill this Rukurobi. With him dead, run on over here for our first Kodama. Just to show you all what happens when I have Rage and Tank in at the same time. Still on, a, still on the brute mindset. And if you really want to make this good, you can combine this with the uh, extraction talismans. See, we now have the shield up. That's the mid stance buff. Um, and then over here to the cloud to take down a heady boy. There's a ninja buff just aggroed us. We're not worried about that for now. There's the ninja. He's down. That's fine. Uh, so up here now essentially if you take the roof over to that way you get your second Kodama and then your third Kodama is going to be right up here and after that you could just wrap the mission up and call it a day be done there you go leave him down there um, but right down there that fog that's an Unroki Right when you kill that Unroki, all the other enemies on the map will despawn and the mission is considered completed. So if you're just looking to, to sprint through and bang a mission on out, that is how to do it. Just come up here. And you can literally run past the guy to climb up the ladder to get to the Unroki to kill it to end the mission. Um, but at that, we'll go get the other Kodama and then we, we are going to work all our way around because there are a lot of yokai here, a lot of good, good potential cores. Stop that. 
side. Make it a little bit easier to fight them since they come down the stairs one at a time. This one does not want to come down. There's our third Kodama. So that's it. If you want, uh, at this point, just run back by, drop down on the roof, and you're all set from there. If you want to continue along, though, pay attention to, like, the next ten minutes. Dama number three, Skeletesso. Uh, open the door for a ninja loot them downstairs. Okay. stairs get this loot and right over there is where we first ran outside where that Rikurubi was uh, so right over here got a skeleton that's hiding you can see how different the parry timing is for that I literally like I want to time that for as I'm about to get booped uh, my scam bush and then afterwards we continue forward for an Ubume one thing that you can do to make these a little bit easier is shoot the Amrita um, Crystal that they think is their baby. It calls them to fall to the ground. And you can then do a fat grapple and just take them down from there. Infinitely easier than dealing with their bullshit. Uh, so go to the right and through more screens. For some loot and a door. Forward outside, we're gonna kill the Yoki first. You can see, just like our damage right now is just insane. It's gonna look our key now. It's like a mini, uh, mini barrier talisman. It's crazy because he was just as potent in the, uh, the original, and they still made him god tier again. So there's our flying bolt. Get the skeleton. Continue on ahead and down. Especially if you're a build that plays in high stance a lot, that's what really makes this so potent. If you're, I mean, even if you're switching stances, you know, you're getting a bunch of buffs. But in particular, high stance is just crazy with this because you're constantly getting that attack buff. And it, it's just huge. It's, it's so big. So, basic gist here is if you're looking to just maximize your damage most of the time, taking Tengen is usually going to beat out just about everything else. Uh, this is a weird little room. There's nothing in here, but for whatever reason, there's always a damn revenant. And it's always a person. I always find a person's revenant in here. I, like, at first I thought it was, you know, a regular revenant, but no, it's a person. Somebody always puts one in there. So, anyway, we got a skeleton out here. Far off, you can see him. Try and snipe him down. Alright, there we go. And right up top, you can see a ninja. You can actually kill that guy back when we're over here if you want. Um, but other than that, go over here, grab the loots. Yabaha! 
Uh, door is nothing. A skelly rat loot. We turn back. Engine corner. Okay. We'll open this. This is going to take us back to the shrine. And we're actually going to spend this and rid us since we have a ton right now. I'm so close. Cumbrance, I'm only getting point one a point. I might need to start investing in strength. Uh, and we just go in here and fight in Unroki. So we, we've covered Unroki before. It's like super weak to confusion. Uh, another thing that's, that's interesting, let me put some on. So these small spirit stones, let me uh, set them up as a shortcut. If you have Tangan, you can just use these. And now I have triple Tangan buffs. And I also have Barrier up. And now I'm basically a god. Fun little way to trigger all the buffs at once if you want them. So pop this open. I'm trying to remember if there is a. Hmm. I think this might be for the alternative version of the mission. Anyway, pop this, and then we're gonna go and turn this quest on in. It also works nice because that defensive buff is gonna have. Uh, it's going to have some synergy with the fact that we are in mid stance when we're spinning to win. So talk to this guy and uh, the quest will wrap on up. Uh, and similar to the obsidian samurai quest, you can keep replaying this and get a luminite shard every time. In fact, this is actually a pretty good farm quest if you want to do Emrita farming. Um, I don't really think it's necessary, but <clears throat> since you can essentially kill the uh, the Myra thing, jump down, fight the Enroki, talk to this guy, and get a 20,000 Emrita item, not a bad quest to farm. And we get a bunch of the Swallowtail set. Uh, so going on down here, the point of no return, this is going to be just a one-on-one -on -one fight against Saito. So Saito was your clone. Um... Same mechanics as the last fight, just beat his ass. Uh, this is in the same area as the Taranashi one, so if you get up and you shatter that crystal, you can use that crystal to get instant yokai form if you want. Which is exactly what I'm going for. Put myself into high stance to get that buff. Oh, you little shit. So you can actually farm these unique grapples off of him. He has a unique grapple for sword, odachi, and for dual swords. And what's really nice is you can use them to drain uh, anima from opponents. They're really strong. You wanna go, bro? Let's go! Boom, boom, boom. It's so flashy. It's so, it's so flashy. Oh, he got me with the grab again. That's one thing I'll give Phantom. Phantom is is definitely uh, the edgiest, I think. Stay away from me. I'm trying to put my barrier talisman up. That's going to take care of him. So as you're kind of seeing so far, pretty much every one of these, these enemies that have unique moves or 
uh, unique smithing text or anything along those lines. A lot of them have missions where we can solo farm them after the fact. So, and that gives us the final of the starter spirits, Kagawani. Actually, a pretty decent one to have on as a secondary. Just take a look at that. It's another phantom spirit. And we get a book of reincarnation from it. So its initial bonuses don't seem all that crazy. Strong attack, key damage, life, tenacity. Uh, but that life drain on yokai ability hit, that's going to be inheritable. So even if we have him on as a secondary, we're getting a C plus life drain on yokai ability hit. And with my current loadout, I'm getting a 5% damage boost to yokai ability damage of phantoms, which obviously has synergy. So actually, you know, let's put that on. We'll put him on, and now that'll give me... Uh, a 5% boost on my Yatsu no Kami and some healing on my Yatsu no Kami just to make things goofy. Uh, so, so, let me check these cherry blossoms. Nope, don't want to do either of those. On to the next region we go. So we're not going to be jumping straight into a mission uh, just yet, but... As you can probably guess, things are going to be getting crazier from here. And coming up on the next episode, uh, we have a mission that a lot of people tend to struggle with, Pervading Waters. We have two boss fights in this mission, and the final boss can definitely be a challenge depending on the build you're running. If you're a ninjutsu, you'll just absolutely melt this thing. If you're not, you might struggle a little bit. So either way, stay tuned, and I'll catch you guys soon enough as we tackle Pervading Waters.